Today I'll be installing a baseboard heater unit. I've got one here eight feet long and then at the lower level three feet. Here's the unit purchased at Home Depot 30 inches in length 240 volt. I'll put a link in the description. I'll use the smaller unit to demonstrate the wiring on each side it differs between the two and it will be the same process for the longer unit so we'll remove the electrical cover just clips in on the top folds down the right side is the easiest you would have your house current from the breaker panel coming through one of these openings with a Romex and you'd have normally you'd have three wires two wires would be 120 volts on each leg either red and black sometimes they use the white I'll cover that later and then a bare ground wire which goes on this lug so you would snip this and put 120 volts to this wire and 120 to this one and then you're done and then the thermostat will turn the unit on and off we'll move to the right side the left side looks a bit confusing however when you break it down it's quite simple the rule of thumb is you find a loop that comes off the top and goes to the bottom and snip that and put your 120 leg here and 120 volts here and then your ground and then you're done unit will work and this one is the loop that carries power through the heating element here it states if you're using a built-in thermostat you go to that procedure and then this section is the procedure for a wall thermostat which is what I'm using then you follow this diagram the blue pointer represents the factory wire you do not cut a and B is the power coming from your breaker panel, 120 volts each leg. So I'm going to swap the wires and show that diagram. This is the wire you do not cut. And these two wires get the power from the breaker panel. So we can tuck that in there and just use these if you're using this side. However, I'll be using the right side. So I can put this back in place. It has a small hole here. Not sure what that's for. You want to use the larger one and it just slips underneath. Lined up with your hole here and put your screw in. Here's the wall thermostat. If you'd like to see this process of wiring this unit, I have three videos explaining it a little bit differently. Each one to shed a bit more light However, you get the same results. So, when you're doing a baseboard heater, you want to make sure your power is off. But don't rely on this unit. We'll turn it all the way on, check power, and throw the breaker off. Here I have a couple devices that you can use to check for presence of power. This one here is pretty cool. You don't have to break the wire. You can just touch the insulation of the wire, and it will represent power or not then we got a meter I'll be checking for 240 volts so I'll choose 600 volts go to the AC side I'll supply a link for these items in the description here's the power coming out of the wall from the breaker panel the power to unit we've got black 120 volts and white 120 volts. They used a neutral wire as a power wire and you can do that but it should be marked with red tape or black tape which I'll do. Then you got your case ground here. So the way this works, if it turns red you got power. Now we remove these caps. I'll show with the meter. So what I've done I went over to the thermostat, turn it to the off position. If you have the off position, there should be no power on either wire. 
so we can remove these caps. However, if you don't have the off feature, usually one wire will be live, so you need to go to your breaker panel, turn the power off, remove your caps, then turn the breaker back on, and we'll check power. So I'll go turn the thermostat on. So when checking with a meter, go to ground, one leg, 223 volts, then check your other one, 223, perfect. Then when you check between these two, it should be 240, 248, 249. All right, so now we wanna find a breaker in the panel and kill power so what I do is use the tester, lean it on here, go down and start tripping breakers until that sound goes out. Power off. Now we're ready to make the connection to the baseboard. I also like to note that lower unit is also operated by the same wall thermostat and you can do all electrical tests to that unit as I just showed and I have the breaker off it's all the same circuit so there's no power here or up top so we're ready to mount both units quick overview of the electrical panel these are single throw breakers which means you're dropping 120 volts on each wire these are double pole 120 volts, 120 volts, and that's the two wires that operate your heater. And all these double poles are 220. I know this is the one for the baseboard heater. But if you come down here and you are unsure which breaker to turn off, turn off all the 220s. And there's a whole list here. You turn them all off, then go check for power. That's an easy way of doing it. However, I know it's this one. So all these can be on and I'll show you the example listen for the beep the beep went out so this one is the one that operates the baseboard heaters and the thermostat before doing the electrical connection we want to find a few studs to anchor the unit to So I got lucky, I found a stud right here next to the wire. Most homes are 16 on center between studs. So at 16, I'll take a finish nail and find a stud. Okay, nothing there. So I can go on this side or that side to find the stud. And all these little holes will be hidden by the baseboard. I don't have a stud finder, and they're usually not that accurate. So it's nice and solid there. The baseboard unit is seven inches high, and you want to see the mark, so we'll go here. Light mark, mark the stud. So I'll just line that up. 16, should be one. Very nice. Seven up. Mark. Double check. Power off. Yes. So, prep these wires. We want that bare wire a little bit longer. Nice. Now, you don't want that any longer then your wire cap, you don't want any bare wire showing out the bottom of the cap. You can also tape them when we make the connection. I'm going to mark the wire, white wire with red. Today's wiring, more than likely, this would be red, black, so I'm using red. But you can use black tape. That indicates that you're using this as a power wire. 
That way, if an electrician gets in here and works, he knows this is 120 on each leg, 240 combined. So, here I have a Romex connector. That's what they're commonly called. I'm trying to use electrical terms. So when you go to the hardware store, I don't know what you're talking about. So you spin this off. And then this will sandwich in between the unit. And pull this back. You can loosen these more, get more with it to get the wire through. I'll show that. You hang it upside down, it stays open. And you bring your wires through. And it slides over the sheathing here. And you only need half inch or less showing. And then you tighten these down. Threads facing outward. Snug is sufficient. You don't want to go Superman tight because this is metal and wire. It doesn't move. On the back, you got several knockouts to choose from. Choose the height you'd like. I have a plate, 2x4 here, so I can't use this one because it won't allow a Romex to go back. So I'll choose this one. Hey, take a flathead screwdriver and bend that out. Sometimes you can twist it with your screwdriver, but this one's being difficult. So, wow. That is bad. There we go. Now we'll install the wire. We'll bring this out. And then this fits right through here. And that's why we tighten the wire on first. Because you can't get behind it. Now you slide the retainer over. Screw it on. Righty tighty. They have a tool that fits this, although there might not be enough room. Another way, the old school guys, you get on that notch, give it a tap, nice and tight. And the hole I had to cut out is large enough to accept the screws in the back, so that's buried in the wall and sits flush. So we'll hook up the ground to this ground terminal, put a little hook on there. Nice. I cinch it up. Try not to bend that wire under that wire because it might hold it up. But you want to be in a clockwise direction or it will slip out. And you've probably heard that on many videos. Now we're power that in there. Now the case is grounded. Protection from shock. If one of these wires hit the outside, it would trip the breaker. So I just noticed when I removed the electrical cover, these were not connected. So this was already set up to be wired on the right. However, if you never opened that and you wired it from the left, the unit would not work. You'd have to come in here and make this connection. Then it would work. All right, so you got red and black or black and black. So color doesn't matter which wire goes where so I'll make this connection so we've got a braided wire and a solid wire with the braided I always protrude a little bit further than the solid because the wire knot tends to push it down and you want it close when you put it on or wrap just a little bit and screw it on allow it to pull itself on don't push down you want that nice and tight. Now wrap it with tape if you want extra security. Protrude just a little bit. Let it draw on. Also another check. Hold the cap. Pull each wire. If it's not secure, one wire will pull out. Since this unit is in a living room setting, I'll be laying carpet and I want the carpet to be tucked underneath the unit. So I'll use the thickness 
of a carpenter's pencil, place one on each end, and then when I do the baseboard, I'll do the same. Just above these large holes, there's a sequence of indents that help you line up with your stud. Here's my mark. And this one looks like it will line up. And I'm using a two inch drywall screw. And even if you didn't have an indent, this would pierce right through the metal. Don't over tighten because it will make it go willy wonky. Snug it up. Wow. Pencil mark cleaned right off. So we're at the lower level. Let me show you this hookup real quick. I added some insulation here, a little bit of cold air coming through there. So we get this through, hook this up. Here's the factory connection, you snip. Strip. Make that a little bit longer. Very nice. Then, mark that wire with black or red tape and then hook these together and mount the unit the same as above. All right. Set the thermostat to off. Go turn the breaker on. Now that's a good sign. If you had something wired wrong, it would trip. However, we still got to turn on the thermostat to make sure it's good. Turn the thermostat all the way up to ensure the heat comes on. Yes, that's heating up quite nicely. Go check the other one. Very nice. Success. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Hope this has helped someone. If you'd like to see how to wire up the wall thermostat, I'll provide a link 